Alhamdulillah wa kafa. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Learning Arabic is a very straightforward process. Out of the five languages that I know, it was the easiest language to learn. But for some reason, people, they tend to complicate it. Last week, I received a message on my Instagram. Somebody said that on the next Monday, they would start their first Arabic grammar lesson. So it appeared to me that that person didn't know Arabic. So I asked them, did you ever learn Arabic before? They said, no, it's going to be my first time. So I asked myself, why in the West there is this widespread misconception that when you start learning the Arabic language, you need to start learning grammar. And they almost make the Arabic language about grammar only. So today I want to show you guys how did I, Allah Azza wa Jal told us in the Quran how to learn a language? And as well, I will share with you three or four other aqwal, other sayings of the righteous predecessors that taught us how to learn the Arabic language. So I can show you that this widespread methodology of teaching the Arabic language through grammar, which only causes students to be completely confused about the Arabic language, and it causes them to receive this appearance that learning the Arabic language is a hard and difficult task. So let's start with the Qawl where Allah Azza wa Jal teaches us how to learn the Arabic language. Allah Azza wa Jal, when he finished talking about him having created Adam alayhi salam, he told us in the Quran, that Allah Azza wa Jal taught Adam al -asma all the names. And then he taught the, the angels. It was reported that somebody asked Ibn Abbas, did Allah teach him the names of the plate and the pot? Such two very simple things, uh, words that are part of our everyday life, a plate and a pot. Ibn Abbas, he said, yes. And even the terms for breaking wind, even the terms of passing gas, basically. Allah taught Adam all the names. Oftentimes you hear students say, oh, but I want to understand the Quran and the Sunnah. Why would I learn clouds, tomatoes, uh, sleeping, bed, living room? Why do I want to learn all of this? The only thing I want to know is Sahih li ghayri wa Sahih li dhati and uh, usul wa aslun wa far'un and all of these terms that are connected to fields of knowledge. But it is known from the scholars of Al-Islam that they would memorize the Arabic language, whether it was from poetry, whether it was from actual dictionaries, like memorizing the whole dictionary from Alif all the way to Harfiya, all the words that are classified under those letters, they would memorize all of that. And I will show you these guys. First of all, Ibn Khaldun, in his book of Al-Muqaddimah, he says, which what could be translated as, that the speaker of the Arabic language, when the Arabic language was present in them, he would hear the speech of his generation, of the people in his time, and their styles in their conversations. How would they use certain words in different contexts and how they expre express their intentions. As a child, hears the use of vocabulary in its meanings. He learns them first, then hears the structure after that and learns them as well. So first, as Allah Azza wa Jal did with Adam alayhi salam, he taught him the names. Ibn Khaldun, he says, he learns them first. The child learns the words first, then hears the structure after that and learns them as well. He hears the word, okay, this means no. So it means something negative, something I need to stop. This means water and this means cup, cup of water, okay. And then he hears adults using it. Cup of water, okay, cup of water. And then he repeats it. He repeats that as well. Then their hearing of that is renewed at every moment from every speaker. And its use is repeated until it becomes a quality and deeply rooted characteristic in them. Now you own that characteristic of knowing the language. Now it's part of you. You develop that native speaker instinct. That native speaker instinct that tells you that something is correct or is incorrect without you necessarily knowing how to explain that thing. Have you ever experienced that when somebody is learning English and they tell you something that is wrong, but you don't know how to explain it. You don't know grammatically how to explain that mistake. And he becomes like one of them, like an Arab. This is how languages and tongues have become from generation to generation and how non-Arabs and children have learned them. Ibn Khaldun from the 14th century, one of the scholars of Al-Andalus. 
As well in the book of Siru Alam al Nubala, in the biography of Abu Zaid al Ansari, it's mentioned that it is said that Al Asma'i, which is one of the scholars in the Arabic language, one of the great poets, knew a third of the language. Abu Zaid knew two thirds. Al Khalil knew half. And Amr ibn Kirkira al Arabi knew the entire language. Now, what do you guys think? I will give you a moment to think what do they mean by knowing كان يحفظ اللغة كلها what do they mean by knowing the language having memorized the language or having memorized half of the language as we all know the Arabic language has over 12 million lexical items 12 million plus vocabulary words so it's known as we mentioned that scholars they would memorize these words and memorizing this vocabulary it would equal to how strong are you in the Arabic language by how much vocabulary you know. And this is why it's mentioned in this biography that all of these great scholars of the Arabic language and references in the Arabic language knew two thirds, half of the language, the whole language, 12 plus million vocabulary words. And it is mentioned as well in one of the books of Al-Imam Al-Dhahabi, Rahimahullah, when he talks about Rashid ibn Kamil, and he explains how he was a literary scholar and a allama, a narrator, the teacher, in Asruniya, and he mentions all of these great qualities. And then he talks about some of the scholars he took from, and he mentions Al Shihab Al Qusi. And then he says, and read his large dictionary to him. He learned from a Shihab, and he, a Shihab, is known that he had a dictionary. Rashid ibn Kamil, he read the dictionary of Shihab, of his own teacher, to him. Now ask yourself, what is the point of reading to his teacher his dictionary? As we know, the dictionary has a lot of vocabulary. That's pretty much what it is. Last time I checked, there is no grammar rules in a dictionary. So why from in his biography, from all the things he could have said, his memorization was great. You know, he learned from this sheikh or that sheikh. He mentioned he learned from this sheikh and he read the dictionary to him as a proof that he was knowledgeable in the Arabic language. Let me give you a modern example. We all know the story of Malcolm X. What made him such a great orator when he came out of prison? What is the thing that he did in prison? He had a very close relationship with the dictionary. That's what made him such an eloquent speaker and orator. So with these guys, I want to show you that it's clear for those who go back to history, for those who go back to the Salaf, for those who go back to the scholars of Al-Islam, and more importantly, for those who understand the Quran, that the thing one should start with, if he wants to be a strong Arabic student, and he wants to be strong in the Arabic language, and eloquent, and fluent, and understand the Quran and the Sunnah through this beautiful language, is he needs to start, and he needs to place a great deal of importance in memorizing a massive amount of vocabulary. And remember this quote, without grammar, little can be conveyed. Without vocabulary, nothing can be conveyed, as a wise man once said. See you in the next one. Assalamu alaikum.